if you notice all the imports that we have here, we don't have any import related to Mojito. We will dive deep into the principles of decoupling in Java, helping you understand how to write clean, maintainable code that accidentally is easy to test. Let's get started. In order to demonstrate that, um, in this particular example, we're going to use a small Quarkus application. Um, we're going to expose a REST API. That's going to check if a person is stored in the cache. If it's there, it's going to retrieve that. Otherwise, it's going to check the database, store it in the cache, and return. So very simple and straightforward API. We're going to start with a slash people endpoint. We're using Hibernate Panache ORM and um, Redis that data source in order to use Redis in Quarkus. So those are two interfaces provided by the Quarkus extensions. And um, we can easily uh, test that using mocking frameworks like Mokito, JMock, and, and EasyMock, or um, use the interfaces and anonymous classes to do that. So the get endpoint by ID. So we're going to provide slash one or two or three in order to get the information about the, the person that we want to say. We have the, if a person contains the command in Redis, the key is present. We're going to return that person if it's not known. Then if that's not the case, we're going to use the find my ID methods in um, Quarkus Panache. So the database is going to return that. We're going to use Redis database for that. If the person is known, we're going to return new um, not found exception. Otherwise, we're going to use the setX uh, Redis to store the key for that particular perso person and expire in 60 seconds and return the person to that. This is a part of the uh, people resource test. We can see that we have the people repository with the ad log annotation in there. Same for Redis that data source and the value commands that we're going to be using to store things in Redis. We have to um, initiate the open mocks uh, using the Mokito annotations class. Uh, that's how JUnit 5 and Mokito interact with Quarkus in order to uh, inject all the information that we need for those repositories as a mox. This is an example of the, of the uh, return what is in the cache. In the first use case, if we have the the, the person is stored in the cache and um, we're going to be serving that and we don't want calls to the database. So the first setup that we're going to do in the preparation step is just like when Redis dot value the, for the person class is going to be returning the value commands because it's required in order to instantiate the value commands. And then uh, the value commands, we're going to use the get method. Notice that we're passing the person colon one um, as a key because that's the format that we're going to use um, in Redis. There is nothing special about that. We just include the, include the key, um, the person ID in order in the key, but could be dash or, or pound or other symbols. Uh, but that's what we decided to do here. And then return the person one. Then when we instantiate the people resource using the Redis and the repository and call the get with the, in this case is one um, parameter, then we will do the, our assertions. The first assertion is like, uh, we're going to check that resources are known, not exceptional trying by, uh, by accident. We're assessing that as well. And then we're checking that the person is equal to person one. Additionally, Mokito has things that are convenient for us to use in order to verify behavior, because we just, we don't want to just test what is the input and what is the output in a functional way. But we also want to say, okay, we're not going to be doing checking anything or storing anything in the repository any, uh, at all. And we are verifying that no more interactions are happening, interaction are happening with the repository. The same with Redis, uh, the dot value and Redis for person dot class is going to happen in only one, and there are no more interactions with Redis. And same for the value commands with the get person column one, and no more interactions after that. So we're checking that's happening once one single time and no more interactions happening with that particular mob. This is another example, but similar. It's just like in this case, the catch is returning no and um, the database is uh, being called uh, with the information and we're storing that in the database. Notice that we have like a find my ID 1L is returning person one. The get person column one for Redis is returning no. 
And um, at the very end, we have the setx person colon one uh, for person one to expire in 60 seconds, right? So straightforward, this is what we typically do in every application. And this is the method that we showed before with the get uh, endpoint. So if we notice that the important portions here besides class names and method names are parameters and return types. So here, the get method for the value commands in order to get that from the Redis cache is just like a give me a string, which is a key, and I want to return to you the person. Then in the second highlighted line, we have give me a long ID, and I'm going to return the person to you from the database. And the third and last command is like, you give me the key and the person, and I'm going to set that in the cache for you with an additional parameter about the experience of the expiration date. So how are we going to fix this? All right. So we have here side by side the, in the on the left, the production production call and on the right, the test. So nothing important or, or very interesting to see here. Uh, this is the, the thing that we show in the slide decks. And now, um, I'm going to switch branches and we're going to see what are the changes that we did and how it's going to be reflected in our uh, test code. So first of all, as we um, discussed in the, in the previous example, so we do have to change what we inject to the people resource. So in the people resource, uh, instead of injecting the entire Redis that data source or the entire uh, Panache repository object, we just need four things in here. So it's a, one is a function that is going to take a long ID and return optional in a person. Um, originally, we were not using optional uh, in the original code, but here we're going to do. So we're moving to functional um, implementation of that. Um, but it's, it's very much the same if we decide not to return optional, but not listed. So I think this is just more elegant. So, uh, and then we're going to have a method that is going to find it by ID in the database. It's a function that's going to take a long and it's going to optionally return a person or not. And then we have a consumer that's going to take a person is doing something with it. In our case, we wanted to save it in the cache, but we, I'm keeping these names in here just because, um, that's what we intended to do originally, but we don't need to put implementation details on the method names. Sorry, in this case, in the um, uh, field names, because it's just like uh, find by ID in the cache, find by ID in the database. It's just putting implementation details in there is because accidentally that's what we want to do. But it's, it doesn't matter if it's in memory. It doesn't matter if uh, we're just logging information in here instead of storing it. That's, that's, that's something that we, we can decide later. So we have to be mindful of what names uh, we use on the on the fields, um, but that's okay for now. So we're passing those as the parameters, and um, here, this is the method that we originally have uh, for uh, the get endpoint. So what we're doing right now is like a, okay, um, because it's a function, Java function, Java YouTube function, it's like a find my ID in cache, apply, pass the ID, or else get. So if this is not uh, is returning empty. So we have a supply here that is going to call the method in the database instead. So the function that we're going to implement is uh, calling the apply method to the ID. And if it is not, it's going to throw an exception. And then we have a method that's called saving cache. Um, it's going to accept the person. It's going to do whatever they have to do. So notice that we don't have here uh, any more about putting how, how long we're going to store the, um, the information on the cache and what is the key name, is person colon or is people colon or is people pound. So those are implementation details that are not related to the people resource. So the people resource is just the contract that is going to, um, the HTTP contract that we have. So the only reason for this particular class to change has to be that the, the contract change, right? Um, there is no other reason for that. So we don't care if we were using memcache or Redis or, or in memory or Infinispan or Postgres versus MySQL or some Dynamo database that is like a NoSQL database. So there is no implementation details in here. 
And uh, we are also using the save in the database uh, consumer here, but that's, um, that's for, for convenient purposes as explained before. So now let's see how the tests are changing. So if you notice all the imports that we have here, we don't have any import related to Mokito, right? So the reason for that is because if we uh, analyze this particular section here on the right, so here, um, the only thing that we need to do is just implement the functions that we have to do, right? So for convenience here, I'm using a hash map for the cache and hash map, different hash map for the database. So the people resource, when I'm going to instantiate, the only thing that I have to do is just say, okay, I'm going to put a function that takes an ID and it's going to return an optional or potentially nullable object from catch.getID. Right, so I'm using the, the store that I'm using is just a hash map. And the same for the database, just the different hash map instance. And for the person, um, I'm gonna use the same cache to store the person ID and the person and uh, using the same uh, cache to put the things in the database. So um, I'm retrieving and putting information in the cache in the database with the functions, right? So that's the instance of this. In this particular example, we said that the cache, that the cache was using, um, uh, it was containing the person one. So we have the person one in the cache. So that's what we are setting this up in here in line 45. And then we're calling the result, um, the get method on the people resource and storing that in the result variable. So here we can do the assertion that we want to do. So basically, we're doing a serve that the result is not null, similar that we have before, and it's equal to person one that we have here stored for convenience in a static version, um, a static variable. And then um, we're checking that the cache contain exactly one entry, which is the person ID one, right? And um, we're asserting that the database is empty because we want to make sure that we don't have in the production code the call to the database, right? Um, if the, the information is in the cache already. So we are not gonna be storing anything in the database. We're not calling the database to get anything. It's just empty. So, and we have the same test here. So um, in order to run and check that, uh, let's use the internet game to run the unit test just to make sure that everything works. And I'm gonna show you um, what is the magic behind all these things. So, um, technically digital magic is very, very simple, but you will wonder where is the plumbing that is happening in order to allow the database, uh, to talk with the resource and also, um, the Redis cache. So we have another class here that I call conveniently factory, but you can use the name that you want. I just like a bad a naming thing. So I use that. So this factory is the one that is gonna do the magic, right? So here we have Quarkus is gonna be injecting the people repository is gonna be instantiating real data source. We have similar code. We move the code from the, peop the people resource, resource um, to here. And uh, we have a convenient method to return the key, which is a person colon key. Notice that before we were not using uh, any keys or anything like that in the cache because the only thing that we need is like, a, I'm going to give you a loan, you're going to give me a person. I don't know and I don't want to know what are the implementation details details about how you're storing uh, keys on Dynamo database or, or Redis or so on. So, but this is important for the factory, right? Because that's how, how the production code that we want to chip is going to be, okay, we're using Redis and we need some sort of uh, key formatting for, for, for those particular keys. So here, um, we have the add produce in annotation method for, for the, to do the injection in, in the presence injection in there. And, uh, we're returning a function that takes along and returns an optional person is called get from Redis. And again, this method doesn't matter. We can call it just get from cache, get from Redis. It doesn't matter. You can see that this method is not even used. Uh, in the code because we don't have tests for this as well. And that's an important piece that we're going to talk uh, a, a little bit more more uh, in a bit. 
So um, I using the value commands to get information. Same for storing Redis. I'm gonna use the setx. And here I do have implementation details about what we are doing here uh, related to Redis, right? Um, so we have the, the 60 seconds um, expiration time and the person and the key, and we have the person key that we're using here um, for convenience. So for the database is just defined by ID and for the saving repo is just a process. Now, one thing that we have to be aware is like, uh, I'm gonna open side by side the people resource in this way. So no, we have this name Allotation is this how the 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 standard allows us to have the same particular times uh, with different results, right? So in this case, um, because the signature is the same, so we have a function that takes a long and returns an optional person for both to from get from the cache and also from get from the DB. We have to say in some way how we are gonna determine those uh, are different things, right? So he basically we have here a name and we put a name, get from cache and get from DB, right? So those are the things that are important here, those t two strings. And we can store those in, in, in constants here in the factory method as well, public constants in order to avoid like a typos and so on. But basically those are the things that we have to specify. And similarly, because the consumers are exactly the same signature, so we have a consumer person um, for saving the cache in the database, we have to use the name. Now, if you think about this, is this is a very simple uh, application. In ideally, in a production code, what I will do is like having um, different objects for what we store in the cache, even different packages or even libraries, what we store in the cache, what we store in the database, and what we expose to the to the uh, REST uh, API endpoint. Right, so and we do some mapping between one object and another, right? So some sort of conversion. Um, uh, think um, one question that I wanted to um, address here, which is typical question, is like, okay, well, basically what we did was move everything from the people resource to the factory, and uh, at the end of the day, we're not testing Redis or uh, uh, people repositories and so on, and that's true. So. The main reason is like we just specify in the people resource what we actually need, which is like functions and, and methods, not classes and interfaces. And, and that makes our life easier. We have isolated testing for that. But also if we wanted to test this, I will say I will not necessarily mod or no mod, sorry, test what people repository does because that's a library that I don't know. And if I selected that library, uh, I trust that the library does what I, I is supposed to do. Uh, in the same with Redis that data source. Now, what give me more confidence in order to test that? So I'm gonna have an integration test at some point. So that integration test is uh, is gonna be uh, the people resource integration test that's gonna be uh, putting information in the database and making sure that we test that as a retriever. So the goal here is not avoid testing the information that is sent to Redis in the database. We, we will have that. The intention here is that in order to do unit testing for the people resource that's quick and is just checking the logic, which is an important portion for us in here, um, we can do that easily in a super cheap and fast integration test, sorry, unit test that is not asking us to um, create uh, tons of mock objects and tying our test with our production code. So um, let's just make sure that these um, Passes before finishing, and um, we're gonna run again the maybe Quarkus command and use the endpoints that we exposed before in order to validate that we still working. Right, and let's store information in the database. First time is gonna take uh, a couple of seconds to initialize all everything uh, in there. Um, we have that. And then if we call the these things in here is returning Carlos three as expected, right? That's it. Thank you very much. And don't forget to like and subscribe.